This episode of That Boy's Got Knowledge was recorded at the House of Bombshell, located at 3601 Clarks Lane, Baltimore, Maryland. I just wanna spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me, is it true? You say I'm the only one that's all for you. Okay, make me feel. Okay. Yo, we got some young kings and queens in the building. Man, we got Stan, Chelsea, Gray. Uh, give me a little background about yourself, man. I know some of y'all had league experiences and some of y'all had overseas experiences. Let me just touch base. Let me start with uh, Greg real quick. Uh, well, I play uh, my last season uh, with the Denver Nuggets, a uh, two-way contract. Um, before that, I was uh, overseas in Turkey, Istanbul. Stan know about that with Galatasaray. Um, before that, I touched down in, uh, where was I before that? Oh, I was in Israel, uh, playing with Gaboa. Uh, it was a good time there. Um, before that, I was in Japan. Uh, that was actually different. Out in Hokkaido, up north, a lot of snow. I seen 30 feet snow. Mm. That's, That's different, funny. I'm trying to tell you. Like, that shit was taller than me. I'm walking on the side, I'm like, dang, I can't even see it over here. Uh, and before that, I was in Australia to start my whole career off. Um, I was actually one of my best experiences, bro. Aussie. <laughs> um, man, I just finished up in Jerusalem. Uh, so I was in Israel. Before that, I was uh, in Australia with Melbourne United. Um, then I had my stint with the Utah Jazz. Uh, signed with them the summer of 2019. Uh, played two years in Turkey with Dasha Fogman. Uh, one, one year in Euro Cup, one year, one year Euro League. Then I was in Germany. Uh, the year before that, and then my rookie year was in Belgium. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I only got one year under my belt. Uh, I was in Romania, small town in Romania. It was really cold. It was like 10 degrees some days. Uh, and then I just signed a contract to go to Italy. So I'll be in Italy. Mm-hmm. She's she been real humble right now. She's average, no. dirty in Romania. She's about 20 years in Romania. She's real, real humble. Gotta sit back with you. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's crazy. That's nice. That's nice. Man, that's great, by all y'all. Man, I appreciate y'all coming on here, man, sharing y'all experiences, man. Let's get into it, man. Um, let me get a little background about y'all selves. I know everybody is. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland na- natives and stuff like that. Uh, I know that we all, everybody in hoop, everybody knows the game and stuff like that. But I want you to, uh, for the kids that's watching, for people that's watching, who or exactly you, you know what I'm saying? Give me, give me an insight. I'll start, I start with you, Chelsea. Give me your uh, background as far as like how from where you came from to now where you came from. I know you went, I know you was killing college. Same with Stan and Greg. So some accolades. Yeah. <coughs> People need to know. People need to know what you, you got some from. young kings and queens in here. We gotta let everybody know. Speak your piece, man. Um well I really wasn't really into basketball till like high school. And so I didn't know like the politics of basketball. Like especially growing up in Columbia, it's like public school don't really get that type of shine, you know. So I just went to a public school, went to Athelton, and uh, made varsity my freshman year. I was like, all right, let me just take it serious. And uh, I was like getting in the gym every single day. Uh, I was kind of a role player my first couple years, because I was still like learning in and ins and outs of the game. Um, but by the time I was a junior, uh, I was like nominated for player of the year, and then the, my last year I got it. But I still ain't really have no like offers to like play basketball. So I uh, had like, yeah, I was gonna go to a JUCO and people was like, no, nah, you can't go to no JUCO. But shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> go ahead. It was like, no, nah, you, nah, you can't go to no JUCO. You too nice, whatever, whatever. So I got like barely this offer from Morgan and it was like end of April. Like, you know, people been signed before that. So I was like, all right, just go with them and just make a name for myself, basically. And I did that, and like, it was already like a system built there, and it was like, I gotta play behind people, basically. That's like what it was, the coaching was like that. So I played behind them, and I was like, it's no room for growth for me here, like in the basketball world, so I was like, I transferred, went down to a D2, and I was like, no, I can't play down here. I'm not gonna get nowhere after this, you know, playing overseas or professional like that, and that was my goal. 
So I went back to Morgan and people really was looking at me like, nah, we don't, they didn't even want me to come back for real. Uh -huh. Not the coaches, but like the people around it, like administrators, they were looking at me like, why are you back here? You left us basically. Uh -huh. So I kind of got some like dirt on my name from that, but I was just played with a chip on my shoulder. Like nobody really banged on me like that. So took that and just ran with it. Comeback was real. Yeah. The father, you been like I said, you been real humble again. Like tell me, <laughs> like tell me, like, like tell me what you just saying. Yeah. 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 Big numbers. Ah, yeah. No, it was cool. Yeah. No, it was cool. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Ye
went there, tried to help them get to the finals, we came up a little short. Uh, COVID hit, like everybody else's situation. Yeah, so, COVID, you know, COVID yeah. hit. So now we at home, chilling, waiting till the next deal come up. I get a deal in Turkey, go to Turkey. Uh, killed there, got a buyout, wound up, ended up in, in Jerusalem. And then, <laughs> the, man, it's like a whole like war broke out. You know, yeah, I heard, I so, I mean, I've been through a little while. bit of trial and tribulations, but I mean, mm -hmm. I, out of all those situations, I played well in both of those situations. So, good. Uh, right now, man, we're just waiting to see what, what, what next deal is going to be on the table. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Very touching. Appreciate it, bro. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Definitely, definitely. Just trying to swim, bro. Regular fish, just trying to swim. Big fish, huh? Regular fish, regular fish. Y'all want me to start in high school days? That's where we started. Yeah, too. Do the whole co out there. Do the whole co out there. You know. Yeah, that's where I started. You know, what I'm saying the mills. That's where we started. Open mills. We started ninth grade here. Uh, I got moved out to varsity probably what, halfway through the season type. Um, and then from there, shit really got real. Um, but I uh, moved out to varsity uh, middle of the season. Uh, Coach Brown started to tell me, like, hey, Greg, you know, this could be your time to just start getting to your zone, bringing yourself out there, be you. Uh, then we get to 10th grade year. Uh, I hadn't really had no offers or nothing, for real, for real. 10th grade year, uh, that's when we really started to take off. Team got better. Uh, Joe was there. Uh, we had a really good team that year. Uh, probably average, probably a double double almost that year. Not crazy. Sliced like ten to ten in a while. Uh, then my junior year is when I really started to take off. Uh, play AU a little bit that summer. Uh, got some buzz. Had like low D ones on me, LaSalle, Robert Morris, uh, schools like that. Uh, junior year probably average fifteen and uh, like ten now. So I'm starting to really push it up a little bit. Trying to come into Greg Whitton. And at the time, to be crazy, to be, be funny, going into high school, I was really only like 6'4 and I just started hitting growth spurts. Like, hey, you out the year. I just started, I'm trying to tell you, I just started growing. It was wild. Yeah, it was wild. I was just growing, bro. I'm like, dang. It just came out. Yeah, yeah. No cat, bro. Football player, too. Right, and then, yeah, that's another wild thing. Also, in high school, I was playing football until I separated my shoulder. And then Coach Brown came to me and was like, nah, you can't play this shit no more. It's just shooting arm. I can't, ain't got time for this. I was like, hey. I'm with it. I'm done with it. Shit, I hoop. Uh, senior year, going into my senior year, I played AU with uh, HEYP Elite, um, small AU team. Uh, we went down to Nationals. We actually won third place in that jump. Uh, we was cooking, beating all the ranked teams, beating Andrew Drummond, all of them. Like, I done played against all of them. Like, they ain't nobody special, for real. They just basketball players. I ain't gonna say too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just you know what I'm saying? Uh, spicy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just real, real quick though, not to cut Greg off. I seen Greg playing high school against Malcolm. It's their 12th grade. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who Greg was at all. Like, I didn't know. And I just was like, this is cheating. It was old Yeah, like, this is cheating. Like, I, I like, I'm like, he has to be even older. <laughs> Oh, they just flat out just cheating out here. Like, no, that team was, was cool. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That team was old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we was 25 to 1. Yo, I, I was running. This is one of the best players in the country. Like, you know, and then, like, his pops was there, like, going crazy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about his pops. He talked about his pops. And I was going to go, I didn't know his pops at the time, so. I hear his pops going crazy. I'm like, man, cut, cut, cut up, man. I'm like, go crazy. <laughs> like, like, it was crazy. That was a good game, though. Like, they was nah, moving. Like, like, that was that was big time, though. That's and after that, like, I'm like, damn, yeah, bro, got some game for sure. I appreciate it, man. I try to do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just try to be good with it, too. Really. But yeah, that year we was 25 and 1. Uh, what was I at before that? You was talking about how you uh, how you uh, started, like, you, at HY, uh, at AU. Oh, yeah, 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 you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, then that, uh, we went there, got third place. Uh, that's when I started to get a lot of buzz, for real, for real. I was about to get into the 25 and up jump. Uh, yeah, I, was, I started about that. Yeah, so we started getting a lot of buzz. Um, I had Georgetown, Maryland, uh, Texas. I had some schools calling now, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like, it's up there now. So I'm like, all right, senior year, it's time to take off. So this one, we uh, got Carrie Bethea. He had transferred from New Jersey. 
Uh, that was my dog, you know. Good pick Shout out to him. Great pick for real, for real. James Peters had transferred in from Howard. You know what I'm saying? So Ozzy. We, so we Ozzy, got, you know, Ozzy, good boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we had got a mob that year. So we started going. We ran through the county for real 25. What is it, 22 games in the county? Probably 22 and 0 in the county. Ran through like it was nothing. Uh, got to about. Was a regional conference final, John? You played a PG team. Ran to Glen oh, Park and them boys again. It was a home game, too. Got tired of them boys. That's when, uh, which car was sitting courtside, too? Uh, uh, Big Thompson. Yeah, Big Thompson. Big Thompson. Big Thompson. Oh, Big Thompson. The, the whole Thompson. family was there, right? Shout out R.I.P. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Had his Big John and Thompson's in there. But nah, so that year went over. Then I got all those recruits. Uh, then I committed to Georgetown uh, from the town. Uh, went there, played. I was in there with Otto Porter, Jabril Charlwick, uh, Mikel Hopkins, uh, Tyler Adams was my recruiting class. Uh, went there, came off the bench, six man. Me and Otto basically came in with two minutes in the game, basically started the game. I don't know why he did it like that, but we played for John Thompson the third. Shout out to him, great coach, will always be. Uh, and then from there, my uh, sophomore year, I took off. Me and Otto was basically A and B out there. Uh, then I got academic and eligible. We'll talk about that later, but uh, yeah. And that's when the career took off. Mm -hmm. Y'all played overseas. Y'all played well, except for you. Yeah, one year. But you still doing <laughs> great. Yeah. Out of all these places y'all been, who has the toughest league, in your opinion? Tough. Man, it's hard to say because yeah. a lot of leagues are tough. Mm -hmm. But the tough, toughs I say I, I didn't play in is Germany and Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was going to say from Turkey. the physicality, the size. You know, when you go play like, and start playing in Belgium, I was playing like the four. Like four or five, mm -hmm. like mm. matchup problem, but also I can guard that. Mm -hmm. No way I can play the four in, in Turkey. You know what I'm saying? Because they're different. They, they different. Bigger. They're bigger. Yeah. Your format is normally six, eight, six, nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I watched the little turn on the stream. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Some dudes huge. Turkey, Turkey physical. Physical. Some, some big dudes. And physical. <laughs> Same with Germany. You know, physical. Might get away with the four spot in Germany a little bit slower. And I can shoot the ball well, so I uh, can stretch the floor, but. When it comes to like Turkey, Israel, places like that, mm -hmm. um, you more so on the perimeter at our size, you know. But uh, I would say both of those was most of had most of and, and Australia a little physical too, but it just depends on what team you play. But everybody in the league in in Turkey and in Germany is straight as cap. I can't really speak on nowhere else because I haven't played there. Right. I haven't played in Italy. I haven't played right. I played against teams, but I haven't played in the actual league. league that's what I'm saying. So, right. so which one's the littest, though? I know they lit during the games. They got the fans jumping with the little Turkey. 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 Depending on what team you're going to play, you'll sure. play that team. Galatasaray. Out of control. Yeah, with their shirts off. With the, you oh, know, yeah. your number on your back. <laughs> That's just back in high school, you know. Back Stand high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bro, bro, they had the most balance out there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Oh, they used to be standing on rails. Hey, nobody they older than them, though. They just. Yeah, you know, oh, the balance out there, great bro. balance. Bro. Got the jersey on. Yeah, yeah. 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 shout out to Gal Toss, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my name on the back, though. This I know. Jersey. They, they, they blessed you with that. That's tough, though. Nice too. It's the soccer team. You know what I'm saying? I had to go check them out a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> so, where's the toughest league for you in your opinion? Uh, like he said, I'm going to go with Turkey, mm -hmm. but also I'm going to say Israel when I played there too. Uh, that league was definitely competitive. Because I was playing, like he said, I was playing the four. I mean, I could play the four. I'm 6'8, six, 6'9, six, but I ain't the biggest dude down there. You feel me? I'm more like a guard type. So, it was definitely an adjustment, but it was fun. I would say Japan also too, to be honest. Low key, like, you go against like Americans, yeah. Like when you match up with your American, nah, nah, Japan tough league too. Low key. And yeah. in Japan, they just they rowdy, so they just playing however they want to play. So you like, watch out for that too. Like you said, Israel is tough because you know you got my team. We had like six Americans. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So you might run. So you might look out there. It's just one that's really on the floor and all American. All American. Yeah. So uh, right. they got to do that all the time. But in Turkey, that's why I say it's so tough. You can have all five Americans on the floor yeah, at one time. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but it was it was different though, you know what I'm saying? So it, I mean So all, I didn't know it was so many rules to who can be on the floor like yeah. that. Like you only yeah. can have certain, certain places. Certain yeah. places. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, certain yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like Japan it was like a one two one two. Oh okay, okay. So you only can so play one certain American, of quarters? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's cheating. Mm -hmm. Right, yo. So what about the, in the women's league? How did, how's this caveat out there? In Romania? Mm -hmm. It's cool, but like they said, it depends on how many Americans be out there. Especially in Romania, basketball not like the biggest sport. They mm -hmm. play soccer, you know? Yeah, it's it's like not, they're not big on basketball, so 
It's different, depending on where you go. No, but you was cooking. I seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I seen it. I seen it. <laughs> boop, boop. Oh, double, double. Oh, oh, let me get the up and under. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm talking about double, double, double. Double, double hard. You definitely double, right. hard. And I, long, listen. Bro. Double double was hard. Left the right shield. Yeah, that was hard. That shit. Nah, I ain't saying it's easy. Double double was hard. That's true. Double double was hard. He's very true. I was playing a minute. Double double tough. I had a couple of them back in my day. Back in my day. No, oh, I had a couple of those at the leadership. <laughs> no, I ain't no leadership. Definitely had a couple of those at the leadership. You got Juco and, 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 and when I got to the university. Well, we got some time. We'll come back. We gotta take a break. Yeah. I just want to spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me. Is it true? You say I'm the only one that's all for you. Okay. Make me feel away. There's a, uh, there's a quote I heard, so I think well, you can get some answer. Uh, but everything doesn't last forever, so enjoy it while it lasts. Now, I know one of my boys is a singer, so he got to be on The Voice. I call that his dream phase. Like, he became a singer, he wants to sing, that's what he's doing. So I, I would consider this for y'all, y'all dream phase. Y'all agree that you know, that's his ball, which I always want to do. So, let me know. Yeah, I mean, um, you finally get that to you where you want to be. I don't want to be professional basketball, whether it's NBA or overseas. So you sh you strike the NBA and you're like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And you look around you and you're like, well, he's been here for seven years, he's been here for eight years, he's been here for ten. And they working like they ain't been here that long. So that motivates you and that lets you know that uh, you got to put in work when you get there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when people wonder like what happened to Jazz or me or why I left the Jazz. Nothing to do with me, it's more so on the business side. Mm -hmm. Every day I went in there, I worked like, I was like they was gonna get rid of me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And they just had to make a move because of the situation of the team, they wanted to better the team, and they needed scoring, and look at the Jazz now, you know what they did, you know, they, they reconstructed that team to where they needed to get that extra push, and that extra push probably was Jordan Clarkson, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Um, they set themselves up, and then also, I mean, it wasn't like it was the end of my NBA dream or whatever, because at the time, when I left, my goal was to go to Australia, kill, come back, sign, sign a 10 days somewhere, or get picked up in the playoffs, mm -hmm. uh, since I already had the NBA stamp, but COVID hit, they messed everybody up, mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. but I feel like once you get there, a lot of guys kind of relax, oh man, I'm here now, I'm good, because it, it can make you relax, the perks, that's there, you know, mm -hmm. flying private. Standing the four seasons, standing risk calls to me on the road. Um, women, whatever, whatever, whatever your whatever your niche is, you're gonna find it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, uh, it's fun. You know, you get to wake up every day and you know do what you love at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Them three letters. You know what I'm saying? So, but me, man, like I had to put in major work, and it motivated me to see the guys that was there for those couple of years putting the same amount of work. You know what I'm saying? To to make sure they stay healthy because at the end of the day, they looked at me like. Well, you can come here and take my job. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta, yeah, I gotta put in work. You know, and the only way I was gonna get on the court is if, uh, you know, God forbid, it was gonna be an injury. We were so stacked. You know, I was there with a bunch of vets, and we were stacked. And, um, when I did get my month, my minutes, and my time, it wasn't even about scoring for me. It was about doing a little shit to gain the trust from Coach Snyder to, and the management to actually. Start getting thrown in the game earlier than rather late. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I never scored an NBA bucket. I mean, that wasn't a big thing for me to, to worry about, you know, why I ain't scored an NBA bucket. It was just like, where was I at when we was loading up on this side when Giannis mm -hmm. had the ball? Or where was I at when, uh, you know, Kyrie was penetrating down the lane and was I staying home? Did I help from the corner? Just that third. That was my main focus. The attention detail things that they told me over a thousand times to do in training camp mm -hmm. to make sure I didn't do it because. They're not gonna worry about what Donovan doing on film. Well, they are, but they're gonna worry about mm -hmm. what the hell I'm doing. When I'm out there, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't, I can't. Fuck up. 
can't, I can't do little it. things. Can't I can't do the little mistakes. That, that don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't even play 30 right, minutes. Right. I'm playing two, three minutes. But you, probably, but you probably had that. It's like, dang, can I, I know yeah. I can score this bucket? Yeah. No, nah, for but sure. Like, sure. Ah, I'm, I'm definitely like this. Yeah. I can score this bucket. I know I can do it. But they want that confidence from you. They want that confidence from you. So, you know what I mean? Until you score the ball. I mean, I had green light if I put the ball in the corner. Corner threes and play defense. That was my thing. So. He told you your role. Yeah, he told me my role. And then also, I was a little bit older. I was an older rookie. You know, I mean, we seeing a lot of older rookies coming to the league. Capazzo, uh, Mike James, all mm -hmm. these other guys that's coming from Europe, coming to the league. I was 27. I was 27 old rookie at the time. 20, 27 going on 28. So that was like, no question, because I played for some great coaches in Europe that prepared me for the situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's what it comes to when you get... You can't get complacent when it comes to these big right. moments. Even in Europe, you can't get complacent. I can go play for the highest team in Europe, mm -hmm. the Chester, exactly. the Madrid. You can't get complacent. Somebody want to a job. Somebody want a job. Yeah. But just mm -hmm. just being, I ain't gonna hold you. Like just touching the floor and being out there, it was probably amazing between both of you. I know, I know for that sure. Mm -hmm. for sure. Like just looking, like dang, I really made it out here. Like <laughs> a lot of people don't see that, bro. That's a fact. That's definitely. I'm trying to my first game. I think I got it in. Preseason was nothing, you know. Nobody right. right. so I played preseason. I played well in preseason. Mm -hmm. That helped me get signed. But I think my first game, like I got in and played the Lakers, and I was just like, oh <laughs> shit, yeah. like, I'm out like, here. Yeah. yeah, I'm out here. Like you look on the side, you see the stars, and like damn. So once that went away, then I'm just like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. But like when you get out there, you see like your idols and stuff up close and personal, like Braun, how big he is, how how well he. Just how vocal he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, uh, like, yo, he the king. Yeah, he definitely does. He definitely does. But I mean, other than that, bro, I mean, it was just you know, when I got my opportunities, it was perfect. You know what I'm saying? So, mm, that's dope. I know you seen CP. That's my guy right there. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't even played when we played CP. We played him at home. I ain't even played, but that was our first home game. We wound up beating him, though. That's when he was with OKC. Okay, yeah, he, he was pretty much doing what he was doing with, probably with Phoenix now. Yeah. Looking at old head, getting yeah. buckets. I see a couple, man. I got to see a lot of, a lot of good players, man. It came across a lot of good players, but um, you know my time was short there. Uh, but I learned a lot so much so that I carried over to me going back to Europe. So now my confidence level is at all time high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going in and I'm just like, You're bugging, ain't you? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> No. So I'm just like, Oh, right. so good. I'm saying, I'm like, yeah. Where I'm coming from right now, like, I'm what? Right. Like, like, <laughs> that's how you felt too? That's how I felt for sure. Yeah, got to. Got to, you got to. Mm -hmm. Like you said, to piggyback off that, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> when you get there, it's like, it's like, Damn, I got that drink. You know, so I can take that all the way. Yeah, facts. Jokes. And then, you know what I'm saying? I've been around with some great players, you know what I'm saying, with them. Even before that, when I was with the Heat for preseason and training camp type shit, I was with Wade, Boss, you know what I'm saying, Chalmers, all. Oh, nice. Like, I've been with some players, but you know what I'm saying? Like he said, it just humbles you to show you that you got to be in the gym more than anything. You feel me? You can't just go in there thinking, y'all, oh, I can be in here for an hour or I can just come to practice. Nah, you got to be in there off when the practice isn't on, you know what I'm saying? Even when the people ain't even in the gym later on at night, just come up there, just get some shots up for the fun of it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do the extra work. Mm -hmm. That's always gonna be needed, regardless of anything. You know what I'm saying? Any job, anything you wanna do in life, extra work always. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. Right. it's it's crazy you say that about that quote, right? <clears throat> right. Um, you're basically saying that you can't you can't play forever. No, you right. can't. Can't mm -hmm. play forever. So. But don't so, waste your time. You yeah, just don't waste your time. So my question, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, Chelsea. Since you can't play forever, how do you find your peace during that process? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, like, you know you can't play, so what, what does that peace do you, that do to you? What, what, what do you know that comes back to you? Man, I feel like on the women's side, it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to, before you even go professional, you got to know it's got to be a backup. Mm -hmm. We ain't making money, like, <laughs> like, like, they don't, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, shit, so I mean, wild. even going overseas just now, before I left, I'm like, I'm getting my master's, I, while I'm in Romania, I'm still in school, you know what I'm saying, I gotta make sure, I got a backup plan, cause right. I know my, my pockets gotta be straight regardless, right. you know, right. so, I mean, even as a rookie, I don't know, I just feel like, you gotta know in the back of your head. I mean, even on the men's side though, like if you get hurt, 
you know what I'm saying, your career could be over, you know, something, something small like that, but just knowing that you got to be prepared for beyond basketball, and I feel like the women's side is a little bit shorter than the men's, mm -hmm. um, just because I feel like, I mean, I'm not going to be sexist, but we're a little delicate, a little more delicate than y'all, and I feel like they got more, you know, equipment, and the men, they got more trainers, you know? Mm -hmm. I just feel like they deep on that side, you know? We just yeah, building, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's messed up. So, I'm just, you know, appreciating where you at, but also knowing that you got to build at the same time. So, right. that's how I feel about yeah. it. And I feel like the women, they're starting to get a voice. Mm -hmm. And I know it's still a process, but mm -hmm. y'all starting to be heard, and I'm seeing that. I mean, the money starting to go up, but it's not where we all want. Y'all still doing double double. Y'all going WBA and y'all shooting right there, yeah. 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 and y'all making a living off that. And I know yeah. it's a constant yeah. grind. You get to miss family. You get to mm -hmm. miss all that important stuff that belong that that's important to you. So mm -hmm. I know that that's just a process. So I salute to any woman that decides to that decides to take that route. That's why I always say like that piece like. Like, I'm big on mental health and stuff like that. I mean, I don't kiss me for everybody else, but I know that, like, that's a constant grind when you playing, for your case, you playing 12 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. And you're probably having, like, maybe one, one, maybe one month off, you come home, get to see everybody, and then you mm -hmm. got to dip off again. And then you, mm -hmm. because you're trying to closely get to that six or seven figures, that's if, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But some of y'all, I know women make a lot of their money off the court as far mm -hmm. as, like, sponsorships, modeling, and all, all this, this other stuff, stuff. so. Mm -hmm. I know it's ways around that, but it's still a constant grind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ways, yeah. but it's you grind, still gotta, you know. Yeah, you still gotta show to face. It, so. you still gotta show face. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's weird because I met a lot of women playing in Turkey and in Israel that play in WNBA. Right. That come over there and play. They mm -hmm. make a lot, a lot of their money there, and then they go back. And I met some that was mothers, and it's amazing to see how they got a adjust their schedule, they got to hire a nanny, mm -hmm. come and take care of their right. kid while they go to practice, go play games, come right. back, be a mother, then go, you know, be a pro athlete. So, I mean, I tip my hat to them all the time, you know, and I'd be mm -hmm. happy to hear their stories and do that. And mm -hmm. like, you know, over the past, what, two, three years, me and Chelsea got real cool because mm -hmm. I seen the potential what she wanted to do and how she wanted to play. And I tell her all the time, I'm just like, yo, you just keep climbing the ladder, you're gonna get there. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, man, it's, it's definitely hard. Like, because sometimes, playing in Europe for women, you may not, you not be, you probably not gonna be able to dedicate your whole career or your whole skill set to the summer mm -hmm. because you gotta go and work, you gotta make your money to, 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 to survive, right. you know what I'm right. saying? So like, where's the with us? It's like, yeah, we come home for three, two and a half months. Yeah, we unemployed, but we straight because we stack some money from overseas and then we get to right. work on our right. body, we get to have our fun, just that and the third, so. It's, it's definitely crazy and it should be changing, but it's some women overseas that make more than men. No, I ain't gonna lie. No, it's <laughs> something, something, man. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. So, so it just depends on, you know, I feel like this really shows how bad you want it. You know, and even for us, like, like man, I, I, tell, I told my people the other day, I said, man, I got a strong 6-7 left in me. That's it. Like, I, ain't, I, like, I don't wanna, I don't want, some people play this until they, until they just can't play no more. Like, until physically, like their back is like Larry Bird or their, mm -hmm. their, their, like their, their ligaments are killed and they just like, I can't play no more. I want to walk away and be like, Yo, if I want to go to the Y and get buckets, I still can't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, 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 trying to get that cardio. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be like hindered, you know what I'm saying? I want to be active. And then I also want to you know, be a family man one day, you know what I'm saying? Right now, with your kids. Yeah, yeah, one day I'm going to play sports. Right now, like, man, I can't, I can't really take nothing super serious because... I'm so gone, so far away, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's tough, bro. It's that's real. It's tough. And that's not everybody. That's just me, personally. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I said, man, I got like six, six or seven left in me to really, really maximize my, my talent and my, 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 my ability to win. And then that's it. You got 10? You got 10. You got 10. You got 10. I'm going 10 strong. 10 strong. It hurt a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It's all right. About it. But think about it. Like it's not bad. Six years, I'm just going to be straight. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just yeah. that. I ain't going to ask you. Yeah, don't ask me. None of that. Seven, eight, you just knocked down. Right. Three. It's just corner threes. I'm just picking pop. Yeah, I'm in here. I'm going to keep moving. There's some people that. I guess we do. It's all you need. It's some people think that do that. They pick and pop. They can do that. And they still pay good money. They still pay good money. Yeah. Be that. Voice in the locker room. Yeah, yeah.
At that point, I'm with my house. He's on his house. Exactly where I was going with. I'm with my house. He's still, he's still. He's still collecting checks for no reason. He's got gray hair just chilling. Just chilling. Talking about, yo, come on, old heads. I mean, young bucks is all you got to do, man. Come in and elbow on people when you come in the game. Get ejected. Get ejected. Like two minutes in, get ejected. Play it, coach. Play it, coach. Play it, coach. Which I know, like, the older you get in the game, like, it's more about IQ. That's about everything. All right. Using my power to drive through LeBron is just different. Yeah, I don't understand. He worked a million dollars on that body, bro. Million dollars on body, You can do a lot. Right, keep like, going all day. Hey, he didn't split his my team. He didn't spend two. <laughs> two. <laughs> two. He need two million. He's getting tired of seeing this boy go down. Man, you know what? You do get wiser and smarter. Games slow down. I remember people were talking all the time. Yo, you ain't, you ain't really getting to your pit. You ain't getting blood. Like, why try this? And you get 26, 27 years old, slow down. I wasn't trying to hit. I was 100 miles running. <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, I'm like, damn, game is slowing down. Like, yeah. I know I'm gonna get my shots from. I know, I know what the play gonna happen before it happens. Like, yeah. like, you know, you learn these things. You know what I'm saying? Then also, like your body starts to tell you, like, you know, my summers. You guys, anyway, my summers was a, a crazy grind. That's the most time I ever took off mm-hmm. right now. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to make sure that I'm healthy and I can. I can get through a full season without those next injuries because that's the worst thing that, that could possibly happen is you're getting mm-hmm. hurt and you've been injured, injury prone. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So the summer is really for you to get better also. Yeah. Learn how to take care of your body. Speaking of that, I'm glad you was talking about it because that's what I want to get into next. Okay. Off-season routines. Okay. Like, you know, when you like when you in season, in season you know, right. I mean, you got practice maybe two a days. You probably got <laughs> treatment, mm-hmm. games on the weekends, maybe two days out of the week. Um, it depends on what's case. I know league, you play like three, four times a week. Mm-hmm. But, I ain't mean, no too much practice, an hour practice. Yeah, so the league, you know what I'm saying? So I want to touch on that. So when you come home for those two, three, two, three months, if that, yeah. what's your off-season routine as far as like getting up in the morning? Shit, when I first get home, Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to touch the ball. <laughs> I ain't going to hold you, man. Like, like that. that. I, I, when I, I, play, I, I say that all the time, though, but I'm going to come back. I say that all the time, but like, I'm not going to touch the ball for like three weeks. I touch the ball a week, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's not even like your hunger for the game makes you, you love it. You just love it so you much. You love it so much, it's like you don't take too much time off, but you take time off. Mm-hmm. I mean, once I get in that mode where it's time to lock back in, get in season grind mode, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I go lift in the morning, mm-hmm. then have a workout after. Mm-hmm. Then I'm chilling for most of the day, less, you know what I'm saying? People want to play pickup or something, but mm-hmm. nowadays, like Stan said, I ain't doing too much of that no more. I just work out, live. Pick and choose. Right, you know what I'm saying? Pick and choose who I really want to play against. Mm-hmm. I got to be really something in there worth it. You feel right. mm-hmm. me? To go in there and be like, all right, I'm going to yeah, use my you. jumping in. You know what I'm saying? You need older now. You know what I'm saying? You need older. Them knees, you ain't got time doing that jumping no more. Mm-hmm. Man. I got to pick and choose some jumping days. You feel mm-hmm. me? That's my mm-hmm. knees right there. You feel me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Um, Man, I get with Jamal at eight in the morning, so I get up by like six forty five. Try to get try to get to the gym on time. I'm always late. <laughs> I'm always like ten minutes late for sure. I get there, get in with Jamal, we get our good work in so nine forty five. Then I go right over to uh Chris Hannigan, go get my weights in mm-hmm. at Route One. So I get my workout early, early. That, early. that way I got the rest of the day to myself. Sure. And if like Greg said, somebody say, Yo, that's hoop or, or Mall like yo, come back and get some shots. We just gonna do some spot shooting. I'll be, I'm open the door because I got my work done early. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's pretty much how I go for me right now. I mean, a couple years ago, I was two days, shit like that in the summer. And mm-hmm. it's not that I'm not hungry no more, but it's down. You gotta work smart. Yeah, work smart. Work smart. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's the thing that KD said. Um, I don't. I believe I read an article. He said when he was, like he said when I was younger, he'd be in the gym for two, three, four hours. He said, now nah, he in there like 45 minutes, get in, get out, and he'll come back in, maybe get shots, like you said, later right. on that night. He said, there's no point in being people being in the gym for two hours. For what? So for it's what? like, like you said, you just work, you're just working on that. You're going hard for that 45. Yeah. Yeah. You're going hard for that 45, and then you put all what you get in, right. plan your work, work your plan, and then after that, you know what I'm saying, you got the rest of the day, and you come back on the follow-up, get shots up. So mm-hmm. that's another mm-hmm. good point about taking care of your body. I mean, yeah. I, that means less stress on your knees mm-hmm. while you're doing that, so you Get the treatment and you're working on your weights. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's like a, I mean, like you said, it's a job off the court. It's a job. Yeah, it's a job. Yeah. 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 People think like you home, you just you party and throwing bottles yeah. and clapping. Yeah. That's, that's all they see. That's yeah, all they see. but no, nah, like you still working through Monday through Sunday. They don't see that. They don't see that. I 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 don't see that
Like, I wish people could, like, really see what it goes through in the season. Two a days, practice, people think, oh, you, but you do what you love for four hours. Yeah, that's a long six so hour long day. Uh, but you, but you the level funny thing is, though, when you're in college, they say the same thing when you're playing. Yeah. You play, we had morning workouts to mm-hmm. what's the name, and then you go ahead. Like, yeah, yeah y'all don't be done. Like, bro. Got like, yo, we got the It's the same thing when you get to the next level. It's like, dang, now's the job. So now you got to consistently break your schedule down. Exactly. The worst thing is Greg can vouch for this and Charles. Like me and Charles, we stayed connected the whole time she was going through her first season. You go to practice, you come home, and then you gotta cook, and it's nine o'clock at night. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Right. Yeah. And then she met, and then, you know, we on the video games and stuff like that, and she trying to manage that school and get on the game. Right. Yo, boy, yo, get on the game, yo, we having fun, get on the game. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's a grind, man. It's a grind, but it's fun. Yeah, you get to is. visit, you get to see the world, but definitely a continuous grind on and off the court. Yeah, you meet amazing people too on the way. Yeah. Definitely, definitely network that way. What about you, Chuck? Your routines? Uh, well, shoot. Before I hit my rookie season, it was COVID, so it was a constant grind. You both of y'all. Yeah, know I was out there in the field with you, trying, 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 yeah, trying so to get the beach body right. Working out two, three times a day because I'm hyped. You, you, you know, I'm crazy for my rookie season. Right. I'm hyped. So, but when I came, before I came back, I was like, man, same thing. Greg said, like, I'm not gonna touch the ball for like yep. three weeks. Like I'm, I'm so serious. I was not right, trying so to see it now. Cause I was going through it. I'm like, man, y'all really want? Y'all really do this? Like, really? <laughs> no, nah, I was going through it. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like I grow. I grew as a person. You know what I'm saying? And then I, I don't know. It's just like out there. It was different because we didn't have no trainers. So it's like I had to understand how to take care of my body. Cause he know. I mean, pizza almost every night out there. So it's like, yeah, burning it, man, it was terrible. <laughs> So it's like you got, you got, he know that, he know that. So, so, oh, oh, it's pizza, yo. I was doing the game, and I was like, yo, you're right, right, making that burnt ass pizza today. <laughs> so I really had to know, you know what I'm saying, I didn't know how to take care of my body. I'm like, damn, I'm hurting, I ain't got no ice bags, they barely had ice out there, you know. Right. So I'm hurting halfway through the season, I'm playing 40 minutes. Mm. So I just really had to take time to really understand, like, professional like I'm an athlete this my like this my job now I gotta take care of this because if I don't got this I'm definitely SOL you know what I'm saying so but when I came back home I tried to work out the first day I got back <laughs> and Jamal hit me like chill you need to chill because it was like 24 hours before I even touched the ground I'm, like, I'm trying to get you know I'm mad like I'm trying to get a better you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I'm just hungry like yeah so I'm upset. <laughs> I took, you know, like a week or two break and then was back to the grind. Mm-hmm. So, but like he was saying earlier, with us, it's like we still got to work. Mm-hmm. We come back on some time. So, like, everybody at the gym, they're like, where you at, child? I got a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? I got to work now. Yeah. But, so. Yeah, you can get a late night to It's yeah, crazy, though. She yeah, work and come at night. Like, yeah. that's a different thing. I'm saying, I've seen that. I, trust me, I've seen I used to take Shorty up there with her. She'd be like, I just got all work. Coming in and let me, like, uh, like, I don't even feel like bed here. Mom about to kill me. <laughs> well, speaking about taking time, we got to take time for the break. We'll be right back. I just want to spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me. Is it true? You say I'm the only one that's all for you. Okay. Make me feel a way. So we all grew up in the, uh, in the Maryland area, and we all played in the um, in the Maryland, Baltimore area, DMV, whatever you want to call it. Can you say that Maryland is a staple for talent? Can you say that uh, we deserve our respect? We definitely deserve our respect. Um, I would say we're definitely a staple for talent, uh, not just in basketball, um, in many sports, football. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of talent out here. Uh, you got Kevin Durant, you got Melo, you know what I'm saying? You got Rudy Gay. Um, we go to football style, Stephon Diggs. You know Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. We go back in basketball time. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of throwbacks here in Maryland. You feel me? Like, I feel like it's really a pipeline here. 
And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like the show they had, it's in the water. I feel like the sun really in the water out here yeah. in, in Maryland. Like, you born here, you definitely got a different swagger to you when it comes to sports, for real. You always got a grit and a grind. You always go get it. You know what I'm saying? You're always hungry. And you always know what it feel like to be pushed with your back against the wall, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I think we got one that, uh, that if he would have made it to the league, because he got drafted, probably would have been the best player ever. He would have been on Michael Jordan, but Lynn Bias? Facts. Sure. I think he would have been. You know what I'm saying? That's a stamp, bro. Like, sure. right. He would have been. He, he would have been it. And he was going to the Celtics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and don't forget yeah, about that. Said, that been. Don't forget about that legendary <laughs> Dunbar team. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Dunbar yeah. team was epic. Immaculate. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. so many players right. on that South, on that South team, you had Reggie Lewis when that, when that passed away from Harvard. Mm -hmm. So they was gonna be teamed up. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely been crazy. And him being from Baltimore, of course, Muggsy, David Wingate, all these guys, mm -hmm. these guys that paved the way for you know Baltimore City, and also the, a lot of great guys that came out of Baltimore County. That's really talented mm -hmm. and, and dope too, man. It's just like you know, on the women's side too. Women's side. Women's side, sure. Women, we got, we got a lot of, like, it's a lot of Baltimore women, but it's a lot of DMV. Like, a lot of DMV. It's, it's crazy. And, I, and I'm starting to see it more now because of Jamal. And that's who, that's Facts. that's Jamal tapped into the DMV on the women's side heavy. Mm -hmm. And to see the talent that he brings in when they play pickup or whenever they come down to play, it's just like, damn, I didn't know we had a lot of women. So, I mean, but we, we definitely stand, man. I mean, you take, you take my 2010 class, I think I mean, that was that was epic. I think eleven guys was nationally nationally ranked mm -hmm. from from my class that was from this city, mm -hmm. and it was crazy. And then what? Two of those guys got drafted, you mm -hmm. know, in the 2011 draft. You know, uh, a lot of other guys, a lot of other guys played. Huh? How many was it? Two of them got drafted. Probably yeah. out of those ten to eleven guys that, that was that, in that, the, that's the percentage. Three or four of them was in the top. Top ten, mm -hmm. I want to say. Pick top five. Right? Top yeah. five. You know, right. you had Skull, CJ, mm -hmm. Will, Josh, and. Well, that AU team was OD. I'm trying to say, <laughs> I may be missing somebody else, and oh, I don't really know. But those four, those four was in the top like ten or what? It was top five mm -hmm. in their position. Mm -hmm. So to see that come from a city like ours, which is small, small. is like crazy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then you you go after our class, and you got guys like the Kill Cars and. Mm -hmm. People like that, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. You know, yeah. of course, yeah. my team from up Emerson and things like that. Like, I mean, we just was, it, it was just talent all over. You know, then you got like, it's a bunch of guys and going down the list. The Nick Faust, all these guys that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Payton. Big Jordan Latham, who, you know, was <laughs> nationally ranked. Like, it, it, it was a lot, man. So I think I absolutely deserve a lot of credit. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just throwing niggas out there to just throw it out there because you know, some people will be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of news. It's a lot of news. It's And it's not only guys that just went on to play professional. You got some guys that went to play professional and came back and gave back to That's a fact. Their, their community and neighborhood. Right. Like, like, I know, I know like heads. Heads. Heads, heads, heads is one of the head coach of digital. You know what I'm saying? Like, not a lot of guys do that. He did it at an early age. You know what I'm saying? So now he can really connect with these young guys. His was on the show earlier and he actually spoke spoke about. Him give it back and him mm -hmm. how he had to give up his dream because yeah. he felt like it was necessary. You know what I'm saying? So making that necessary uh, sacrifice for him. That's bigger than any multi million dollar contract that a guy could sign. He doesn't go play right now and go play. Yeah, he money. still got it. He still got it. I think he got like 30 in the front The trade was crazy. He is a, 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 dope, a dope athlete, bro. I mean, what he doing for you know digital was big time. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys that was before us. Right. Dante Green's and Malcolm Delaney's and Dante Drake was right. yeah. the pipe like we got yeah. pros. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I, and, and this is just on the light side. I'm not even naming like mm -hmm. the guys that like you know, it's a bunch of other guys, you know, like mm -hmm. Ricky Harris, Ricky. Kevin Palmer, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? T Holes. You know what I'm saying? Like Reggie, Reggie Holmes. Mm -hmm. Let the let the nation score. Morgan Legend. Out of Morgan, uh, Morgan, Morgan Legend, bro. Yeah, All time yeah. leading score at Morgan State. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you go in there, you see his. Yeah, like, like, joint like this. You know what I'm saying? But coaching thing back there. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, it's a lot of talent that came out, and we, you know, just because they don't have the pop in there or they didn't make the NBA or they didn't play at a, at a Real Madrid in Europe, don't mean that we got talent. Like, DC got a lot of talent too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Chris Moore, I'm sorry. Yeah. My brother, yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure, I, got, I, got, I got to give his flowers to Boo. I give Boo his flowers too. Boo actually started that whole. He actually was in the start that little broke, broke the league and then so he actually broke himself into the Wizards and stuff. So yeah, man. Yeah. And he was like a six day killer. That's what I'm saying, yeah, bro. So it was so, it was so it was so it was so much going it's through the city, just the city alone. I ain't even touch on the county, or the or the PG County, ain't that? It's just this city alone. Right. I'm saying like we got we got to come out of Howard County. Bro. I'm just saying, we got him, uh, we got Greg, and we got Chelsea that came out of Ho Howard County. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not even respecting. It's still, it's still more, and it's still though. going, it's still and still it's still coming up. So it's just, anyway. It's a major accomplishment. Yeah, I feel like Maryland is definitely a state. I feel like, yo, if you're going to recruit, like, we know, I know Baltimore, we, we know if we are great, and we know our toughest. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you're looking for that, you come to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could come to DMV if you're looking for a bucket. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so you, you ain't getting nothing with that. Dog, and, and, and you gonna talk that? And you gonna talk it while you while you doing it? You know what I'm right, saying? Exactly. So, so, so and, and we always carry that chip. I feel like people from this area we carry that chip. Yeah. You we, gotta look at it right. Tank said the craziest thing. He was like, before this fight, he was like, man, I just built off aggression because when I come outside, I gotta be aggressive. Mm -hmm. I'm just starting to let that aggression fall back. You know, mm -hmm. and actually tap into with my peers and not be on some always aggressive type stuff. So that's us. Mm -hmm. When we come out, we are aggressive. We naturally aggressive mm -hmm. because of what we come outside to. How we, talk, we see. How we talk. Right. What's going on around us? Mm -hmm. Drug infested communities, prostitution, whatever you want to call it, killings, all that stuff. I even, you know what I'm saying? So like that stuff is like it's when real. you get on the court, the who you thinking like, man, look. I gotta do whatever I gotta do, yeah, so I don't have to go back there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's, no that's a it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You definitely say that because I mean, when you when you say that, you look back and you be like, damn, how we talk. Like you go, like I said, I play, I played down south, so I know some of y'all played mm -hmm. in the country part. You go down there, so when you talk the way you talk, they be like, yo, why you, why you sound so aggressive? Why you sound bad all the time? I was like, oh, I'm cool, man. I'm chilling. Like, like, yo, why you, you about to fight? I was like, you good? I'm like. Yo, all right, yo, I don't even know what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just chilling. So, so we, so I get when they say we're aggressive. We don't even mean to be. Just that's how we just come off sometimes. It's, just come off. You just jump off the porch like that sometimes. It's just like yo, we just gotta get it by any means. And we don't mean no harm by it. We just, we just, we just like you said, stand. So we just ain't trying to go back to where we just came from. There's a lot of people that made it and they come back and now they on the corner, selling crackheads, whatever you want to call it. And that's true. And I, I feel bad. That's why I, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I'll be driving through the city, and you got them squeezy boys out there trying to make a living. I mean, I give them a couple of dollars sometimes. Cause I just feel bad, and they could do something better. I mean, they could do something Sounds else. Great, but I didn't just try. You know what I'm saying? They could be out selling drugs, shooting. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, you gotta shoot what they can, cause they trying to make something better on themselves out of that. So that's a big thing. But we like before we, you know, let Chelsea say our piece, cause I want to hear how she feel about it. Mm -hmm. But like, it ain't nothing better when you can go outside of the United States, out of the country, mm -hmm. into Europe, and somebody asks, oh, where are you from? Baltimore, bro. Oh, wow. From Baltimore, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. The first thing they bring up is like, the why? The why? The why? The why? That's the first thing, the why? That's all they know. You know what I'm saying? The why in the corner. And then they may, they may I had a couple people a few times, oh, come on, Anthony. You know, something mm -hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's amazing that like, mm -hmm. this little city that we live in, it's no nationwide. Right. Regardless if it's negative or positive, whatever it is, it's, it's still good. like it's impressive. Still you know what I'm saying? And this is Maryland period. You mm -hmm. know, because they know if I say Maryland, they don't understand. Oh, DC. Oh, watch DC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it's just crazy, man. It's crazy to see that. You gotta let them know where you from. <laughs> <laughs> no, not DC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wire. The wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real. <laughs> As far as like talent in Maryland, I don't know if it's different on the guy's side, but I feel like not only is it like a melting pot like full of talent, but it's like I feel like recently everybody been coming together and really just like sharing knowledge about the game. You know, it's not like selfish. It's not like I'm gonna get mine. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody coming together, spilling knowledge to you know the younger ones or people who's like you know staying age and great age. You know, they just spilling different knowledge and it's like growing even more. Whereas like when I was younger, it was like you had to be a part of like 
these big AAU teams and get like all this knowledge and it's like if you start about this, yeah so but, it's like it's different now it's like you can go to pick up and run into you know somebody who played big and it's like they just spilling knowledge left and right while they playing with you they can see but you get grit you know what I'm saying so I think it's different now I think it's different people don't understand that yeah yeah you tell exactly that take them she's here around the nose coming up AAU is like if you weren't playing for Nike Elite, mm -hmm. you weren't playing for Cecil Kirk, you were no, man. Like, you just forget about you can forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. You can forget about it. You can forget about it. You can You can forget about it. But now, bro, yeah. there's so many AAU teams and they so making up so many teams. Like, I'm like, yo, I'll be asking kids. And like, where team the rep came from? They so got every player from Baltimore. The Red, Thrill, and now Team Mello slash MD23. Some of the top programs in this area, and also uh, um, Cut Nation. Those four. Cut Nation. Shout, out to Cut Nation. Shout, out. Shout out to Cut Nation. They, Cut Nation. They, 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 they that's the program up. that I'm tied with. Uh -huh. They yeah, got. They got four. That's the four top. I feel like programs right now. If you if you look on Instagram, you're gonna see four of those all the time. All the time. Cut like all that the time. too. They got some gritty. Cut all Nation. Time. What Cut Nation is, is just, it's like, it reminds me of me playing with Crusaders Nation. You know, Underdogs. They, they still there, though. Crusaders Nation is still there. Take over there. Underdog. Take over. That's decent. I'm talking about ball. That's <laughs> decent. <laughs> take over. Take over. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That's like PG, yeah. though. That's, oh, I'm a PG. Don't get me wrong. Take over. Take over. Like, yeah. Take over. 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 That's top tier. You take over. Take over. Like, take over. Been around since we were playing. So, you know, having them around is like, you, you know what they could, you could be on the bench. But these teams that I'm talking about though right now is crazy, bro. You could be on the bench and stupid if you want. Like, yo, I ain't that's played two minutes, but you know. So you got all I'm gonna score a layup. I'm gonna off you real quick. You, know, you got some game. You got a little bit of you know game. You know what I'm saying? You got a little bit of game. You got a little bit of game. You got a little bit of You got to show off during the layup, man. Okay. You got to be doing a little bit. It's like, okay. Okay. Cool. I don't want to keep talking about the AU shit, but. Man, it's just crazy how it is, you it's know what I'm saying? And if you play for those top teams, you're going to get whatever offers. Love. Right. With us, like, when I me and I, uh, John was rocking with uh, 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 Crusaders Nation, yeah. nobody ain't know who we was. Yeah, but John was... We was going in there, it was going in there smacking Black Boo Williams and teams like that. I'm gonna give you a short story. I'm gonna give you a short story about when we played the Boo Williams, right? This is when I knew Stab was like the real deal. We got Hold up, before you start, before you start, mind you, we went to this tournament fresh off their prom. Off prom. Oh. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, year was this? This, this, was, this was 2009 prom. This was after 2009 prom. Oh, he okay. wasn't there. No, yeah. I, Fresh no, off the prom. So, so, yo, so, so yo, our coach had to give us a drought. He drove all the way to Nofo. We fresh off the sleep. No, we was in Hampton. Ha we yeah, Hampton. Hampton. Yeah, you're right. We, Hampton. Hampton. we sleep. Coach was like, uh, the dude said, yo, you got to get out. You got a game in like 20 minutes. So like, we suiting up. Coach was like, yo, about time y'all get here, suit up. So, I, you know, I was I'll come up a bit so I get to see full live, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I get to see the first, like, I get, to see the full, right? I get to see the first 10 minutes, you know what I'm saying? So, I think the time we were playing against Boo, they, they was like maybe top 10 in the nation at the time. They had Travis McGee, they had Kendall Marshall, all them, all them known, they all they all signed and stuff. So, I ain't gonna lie, this is when I knew uh, Stanton was the real deal. I was like, yo. And I ain't saying he's family or whatever. No, everybody his family, but I'm just saying, like, yo, it was one play. When he caught, and I knew he was ready. Cause the dude Travis scored up, scored him, ripped through, layup. And you know, like Baltimore, so he took that as a channel. Like, all right, you ain't about to do this to me on you know I'm saying? no platform. We got scouts sitting there. So, mm -hmm. so he ripped through, layup. He, talk, he said something to Stan. I knew he said something to him. Stan looked down. He, you know, he never talked in the game, so I just knew how he was going to be, you feel me? So, ball, I think who shot, somebody shot the shot, ball. He come out of nowhere and like caught like this, and boom! And said something to the yeah, I'm here. Scored 10 bucks after that. I was like, yo, where this dude come from? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, I was, bro. And after that, I think after that game alone, we that, that was just the first game. We played like four games after that. Right. 
I mean, I did my little thing when I had my chance. I got to throw that in there. 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 Throw that in I was cool. I had my 15. I was selling the bitch. I'm cool. I'm on the drive. Long, long old man was rocking. I was rocking. You feel me? That's how I was rocking. I, was, I, mean, I still got my scholarship. I ain't gonna try. I wasn't no sorry, bro. You feel me? But at the end of the day, let's get back to him. Yeah, you feel me? But after that game, yo, this is when I knew the letters start flying, the phone calls start calling. And I remember him, like, he was in uh, his first letter he got. He had a shoebox. Threw the letter in, they said, I ain't even gonna look at it yet. I think like two weeks later, I come back over to the crib, open it, and he said, Yo, I'll, go, I'll check the shoebox. I was on the stairs, we'll check the room. I seen the shoebox, the shoebox was full to the top, full of letters. I said, I can't open these letters yet. He was like, I don't even know where they coming from. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, he was just chilling. Like, that's how homie He was just like, Yo, man. And he, and he he was mad like he took it as like yo like we were talking about last episode like no no eighth place trophies and stuff yeah. like he was like he took it as like yo it took me for him for me to catch a lot it took me for him to catch a tip back tongue for him to be be noticed no I ain't got time for that I mean I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see him later I'm gonna see everybody later and I feel like Greg did the same thing when he played against Andre Drummond he played I mean he played he said he played with the. Uh, HY was elite, you know, he playing against them Screw guys. I remember, some, some I, 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 I remember my brother. Howard County. Howard County. Yeah, he played against number Howard County. Oh, Howard County. Yeah, and I remember, I remember my brother called me. I think I was in college. Yeah. I was in college my freshman year. And they told me about their game while they playing. They would say, yo, I remember Greg when I was playing him in high school. I was like, Greg, I mean, all he did was football play. He was shooting block shots. All he did was shooting. He ain't getting no blocks. He ain't getting no blocks. Yeah, he was like, no, I said, Greg. Great, different. I said, no, no, no. This, this is why I do solidify. Stat called me. He was like, you know, do that great, man. I said, oh, man. Go set the phone. I was like. I was calling him Baby K. Yeah, I was like. No, then I saw the YouTube joint. He coming down. Great always talk. He talk his, he talk his smack in the game. He never, he never shut up. So we hit the little, the little, the T-Mac pull up. I was like, no way. <laughs> Did it again? I'm like, oh yeah, he going, he definitely going D one, <laughs> six nine doing that. So I was just like, and then you know, I said about Chelsea too. They they was like, Chelsea didn't tell you though, so she played football. Play football, yeah. Play yeah, football. Play football. Yeah. Child play football. Yeah. She played football. She played football. She played football at average. She played up until like what? Yeah. You saw her? No, right before. No, right before I went to Avenue. Yeah, so she played football. Oh, okay. So she didn't play no look of basketball. So when she just started playing, she was like, oh, I'm just out here, just out here. And then she just was like, all right, I'm just start getting rebounds. So, oh, okay, I can score this joint now. Hold on, hold on. So you was tough, tough already. Yeah, was yeah, that's why she yeah, had I mean, the trouble. I with my brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mentally like tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're mentally tough, you're ready. You're ready for the next level. Yeah, like yeah. I'm saying, like, she was like, that's why I said, yo, Baltimore, Maryland is just different. That's why I was coming down to. Like, really different. But let me, let me change gears real quick. Um, I know there's a balance between basketball and your personal life. Um, tell me about your balance. Because I know you, when you start locking in with basketball, it tends to take over your whole life. But when do you find that balance to like, you're like, all right, yo, let me go chill with some friends. Let me go chill with my girl. Your let peace. me go chill with them. What, Where's that peace you lines in? Because sometimes that starts to take over. I know for me, when I was in college, I started looking at it as a job. And that's, and I, that's when I started losing the fun of the sport. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, yo, I'm not, I'm not going to a season. Like, by my junior year, I was just like, I'm getting these agents calling me left and right. So now I start thinking of it like as a job. Mm-hmm. So I start losing, like, the whole reason why I was playing the game in the first place. So I started like that. So I, I, I didn't really start finding my peace until like my second year over, overseas, where I was just like, all right, let me start reading a book. So I started reading a book. So I said, I love money. So I was like, yo, all right, I'm going to start reading money about books and stuff. I'm like, I went to school for business and stuff. So I'm like, I'm just looking to money. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I, that's what I find my peace. So let me just. Ask y'all, where do y'all find that balance between basketball and your personal life? When Greg, we have a like, great, you know, family man. Like, he got a lot of things to take care of. For me being single, no kid, no nothing like that. Um, it'd be hard, man. It'd be hard because uh, 
I can't. Sometimes I forget to call my mom for a week and a half because mm -hmm. I'm so locked in. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I don't love my mom. I love my mom to death. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all, y'all met my mom. Y'all know my mom. Mm -hmm. Most lovable person. But it just be, I be just so locked in, bro. And um, and I, sometimes I lose that the fact that yo, this is fun. This game is fun. But at the end of the day, I get paid for it. So mm -hmm. you get locked up, and then you get your competitive spirit. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, um, you just gotta learn how to find it. You know, learn how to step away from the game. That's why I play the video games so much. Because mm -hmm. I, I can step away out from the game. Mm -hmm. That's why I like going out to eat. You know, maybe go out, go out, and have a little bit of fun here and there. You know what I'm saying? Because you get a chance to step that's away the Call it from the game. You get to step away from the game. That's that piece, right? That's, that's, that's that the piece. piece. I don't want to talk about basketball when I come home from, like, you know, come home from practice. Like, oh, I can't I ain't. do shit about it, man. Fuck out. Even here. Even here, <laughs> man, I hear that. Even here like, when, I'm, when I get home, we've got a rule in my house. Pop, do not talk about basketball to me for a week. <laughs> like real talk, I don't want to hear it. Don't I don't want to hear nothing about what happened. We'll talk about it a week later. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he, you know, my pop, he do the right thing about that. You know what I'm saying? He hate when people come in there and ask me about basketball. You know, he'll tell you like, man, leave this man alone, man. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but that's that's the way I find my pieces. Just kind of stepping away from the game, doing activities that's away from basketball to get my mind off of it while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. That way, I can still have the same love and have the same grind mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. My piece, I'll say, be like my kids nowadays because I got three of them. You know? mm -hmm. Three boys, three kings. Family, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd be like my piece nowadays, you know what I'm saying? I get time to call them, you know what I'm saying? I don't got to think about a sport, you feel me? Now I get to give them knowledge of a sport, though, even though I don't want to talk about it, but it's kind of natural because it's really right. not like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, next to you, trying to Right, you know what I'm saying? It's just a connection for like, uh, But I was like, like he was saying, video games, I do that constantly. If I ain't in the gym, I'm on a video game. I ain't doing Keep nothing. you out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Keep me in the house. Keep me, me low key. You feel yeah. me? I ain't got to worry about that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Stay right. away. You feel me? Like, so why not? I'm sorry. I was not supposed to curse on this joint. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> speak your speak your piece. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But like, other than that, I just like really like being with family. You feel me? Like, I be with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I be with Bell constantly. Like, that's my dog. It's be like my brother for real. You know, we not blood brothers. My brother. You know what I'm saying? But I like Bell. That's my piece right there. My family, my kids, and just video games. That's all I need, and I'm good. And then, you know what I'm saying? You always had that piece because you love the game so much, and you want to do it for the younger generation. Just show them that you, there is a way, there is a will. You, feel me? you can get it to wherever you want, no matter what it is. Right. I'll say the same thing, my family. But then also, I feel like I got a different perspective. It's like what you go through off the court. And it's like a change of perspective sometimes. You go back and forth and it's like basketball is my piece. And then you flip it and it's like sometimes you be too right. locked in, you know what I'm saying? And I gotta take a break. So it's like, I feel like it's flipping back and forth for real, for real. So mm. it depends on what you go through. What you going through in the moment, you just gotta read it. Facts, facts, facts. Sometimes you need basketball as that piece. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, especially when, no, like, no, no, like, you definitely do when we basketball. was overseas. And it's like, you know, all the stuff going on with the election or like Black Lives Matter, and COVID, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All that stuff. Sometimes you just got to, you don't even got to talk to your family because, you know, they like, oh, mm -hmm. you heard about this? Yeah, you know, you're looking Let at me this? just it's go in the gym like, and shoot, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about nothing. None of that. So it just depends on what you're going through in the moment. For right. Right. So the gym is always the amazing. The sanctuary is the Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what's it with me shooting in the gym? Huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Real, quick, <laughs> real quick before we wrap this stuff up, man. Um, I, I know this, this platform is for, it's for, it's for y'all to drop knowledge. It's for y'all to give back. So let me end off with this. Um, what knowledge can you give to the, to the youth that's watching? What piece of advice can you give to them, and then we can go down the line? Uh, don't listen to it. Somebody going. Somebody's always gonna tell you no. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Don't let that no stop you from getting to where you wanna be. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, time is, doesn't be here forever. You know what I'm saying? I'm 28 now. I remember the day somebody told me, "Hey, time doesn't last." You feel me? So like it runs out quick. So just mm -hmm. to cherish every moment. You know what I'm saying? Every day, you never know what's gonna happen. Say I love you to the ones you love every day because you never know what's going to happen with that. You know what I'm saying? Fact. You got to cherish everybody you come across in life and you know, just, just grind it out. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing easy in this, y'all. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, then we all would have it. You feel me? That's that fact. was the case. Right. Um, okay. Don't be afraid to fail. That's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody can make it through when it's going well for you. Mm -hmm. Everything at all times. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to ask questions. 
you know, I always tell the young guys that's in my neighborhood or the gym that we're at, don't be afraid to ask me no questions. Mm. You know what I'm, I'm here to help because I didn't have that. I, mm. I never got a chance to be in a gym with a pro sure. until I became a pro mm. or until I, until I was about to be a pro. You know, so to be around pros, constantly ask questions, pick up brains because the only thing we can do is tell you information to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're just gonna be your turn next. Okay? Yeah, do the same yeah, thing. Just, okay. I would just say, I'm gonna say two things. Always play with a chip on your shoulder, one. Mm -hmm. And two, invest in a mentor. Because mm -hmm. I know when I was younger, it was nobody really there, like, you know, not nagging my ear, but like, just tell me what they've been through. But also, like, they see things differently than I see it. So. Right, right. And I feel like when I was young, I don't, I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? I got it. I, nobody taught me nothing. I got it by myself, basically. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to hear other people's experiences. Yeah. And they advise for me at the end of the day. So right. that's the mental. All right. So we all in the same pitch. You got different poses, man. I appreciate y'all for coming, man. Um, <laughs> real quick, y'all can drop your IG so they know when the follow us watching, they can follow you and tap IG, in with you. Man. Man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna Boy, follow drop, it. drop the link. Drop it in there. Drop the link. Click the link, subscribe. <laughs> oh, yeah, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, That's what please, do. The boy got the oh, nice. roll rolling up. And I want to end off with this. Don't forget to be your true, authentic self. We all right. kings and queens. And we all made it. All right, we all. Me. Hey. I just want to spend my life with you all day. You say that you love me.